Climbing a mountain is not easy. The air gets thin, gravity pulls you back, the gravel under your feet makes each step uncertain. It takes endurance, persistence, and a personal, lonely conviction to move forward when everything is pulling you down. The same can be said for standing up for your convictions when the world is pushing against you. That's where Elijah finds himself on Mount Carmel, facing an entire nation all by himself. It's hard to describe just how evil Israel had become. They believed the fertility god Baal needed to have sex with the mother goddess, Asherah, in order to produce good crops and livestock. To provoke Baal into this, male worshipers had sex with the priestess and prostitutes who were sex slaves kidnapped as children. Baalism also involved the worship of Molech, who demanded child sacrifice. Parents would place their firstborn into the outstretched white hot arms of a metal idol where the baby would burn to death. The parents couldn't even show emotion and drums were beaten to drown out the cries of the baby. Doesn't that just make you sick? It was time to put an end to the evil that gripped God's chosen people. After more than three years of drought, God sent Elijah back to King Ahab. Remember, Jezebel had nearly exterminated the prophets of God, and Ahab had spent the last three years hunting Elijah down with the intent on killing him. Elijah must have been nervous, but he was faithful. Upon meeting Ahab, Elijah boldly orders him to summon all 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Azra to Mount Carmel for one final definitive contest to prove whose God is true. Mount Carmel was a dramatic site for this showdown. The mountain is right between Israel and Phoenicia and was considered Baal's sacred home. Watched by hundreds, if not thousands of Israelites, Elijah gives a speech bursting with double meanings. In 1 Kings 18, verse 21, he says, "'How much longer will you waver, "'hobbling between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. First, we need to know that the verb wavering can also mean to hop, dance, or leap, and is later used again in verse 26 to describe the way the prophets of Baal danced before their altar. He's also telling them it's time to make a choice between Baal and the one true God. Commentator David Gusick describes Israel like an unfaithful spouse who doesn't want to give up their marriage, but also does not want to give up their illicit lover. The marriage partner has a legitimate claim to the exclusive devotion of their spouse. Israel can't have the best of both worlds. It's time to return to God. We know how this story goes. The prophets of Baal sacrifice a bull on the altar and call on Baal to set it on fire. They spend hours frantically dancing and cutting themselves, imploring Baal to take action, but they aren't successful. Finally, Elijah rebuilds the altar of the Lord and prepares to sacrifice a second bull. But he goes even further. He digs a moat around the altar and drenches it with water. Finally, in verse 36 and 37, he prays, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Prove that I have done all this at your command. O Lord, answer me. Answer me so these people will know that you, O Lord, are God and that you have brought them back to yourself. Immediately, fire falls from heaven, igniting the altar. And at last, the people of Israel fall on their faces and cry, the Lord, he is God. Yes, the Lord is God. Elijah orders the execution of every prophet of Baal in obedience to God's command in Deuteronomy. And with God's work done, Elijah climbs to the summit of Mount Carmel, falls to his face, and prays for rain to come and end the drought. 
God was made known that day through the obedience of a single faithful prophet. His actions forced the Israelites to make a choice. Who would get all of their devotion? We have the same choice to make every day. This world has many gods that seek to distract us. Money and what it can buy, popularity or fame, power, lies, addictions, and more. As believers, we are called to be leaders and stand for God, even if we stand alone. We're experiencing that in our world even today with all of the different agendas that the media and the world is trying to force upon us, God has given us the opportunity to stand firm. Have you made your choice to follow God alone and take a stand, no matter what direction the world is pushing you? Take some time now to discuss this with your life group. And may God bless you and reveal himself through your time together.